Alright, go. Oh god. Are you okay? I don't know. Hmm. Let me see. What do you feel like today? Well, my body is aching everywhere and I feel really, really warm. Uh, let's see. Yep. You do feel like you have a fever. I think we're gonna have to test you for the flu. Like, ugh. Have you been um, close to people that have had the flu? It's like, well, I don't know. My brother always sneezes in my face, so, and he's been feeling a little achy. But last time I had the flu, I didn't really feel like this. It was just kind of like sneezing and annoying, but I didn't feel this bad. I even have diarrhea this time. You shouldn't like take that time yourself Okay, well, it is really important for you to get the flu shot every year. Why? But isn't it kind of like the chicken pox where you just kind of get it one <gasps> in a lifetime and then you're kind of done with? No, honey, that's not the way the flu works. The problem with the flu is that you have to get it every year because a new strand develops every single year. That is why it's so important. The flu is one of the most fastest um, organisms that develop. And you can get it very fairly easily through any uh, contact with the mucous membranes and it causes a series of um, symptoms such as the ones you're describing now like um, sneezing, diarrhea, fever, body aches. The problem is that every strand is a little different so this kind of flu you might not recognize from your last flu. Scene two. We have to be extra vigilant because sometimes the flu can change into something even more powerful and dangerous for humans. The flu virus is made up of three basic types of viruses, A, B, and C, with B and C only infecting humans, but the A virus can infect non-human hosts like birds and even pigs. This happens when the rearrangement of the genes or a mutation happens between these subtypes of viruses that infect both animals and humans resulting in something we call antigenetic, antigenetic drift. Mutation can result in progeny viruses that contain genes from strains that normally infect humans. This leads to the creation of new strains of viruses that have never been seen before. As in all viruses, the genome of an influenza virus is encased in a capsid consisting of protein. The A capsid contains antigenetic glycoproteins, which are a type of bonding agent that form connective tissue that helps support the cell wall, and, and they also contain hemagglutinins, HA, and neuraminidase, NH, and it takes hundreds of each of these molecules to form a capsid. These protein parts are recognized as foreign by the immune system, which generates an immune response to the invader. There are many subtypes of influenza, HA and NA, and the body is frequently challenged with new antigens. New mutations of HA and NA can affect people even though they may have previously been infected or even vaccinated for earlier flu viruses. Both humans and animals alike can be infected or serve as reservoirs for the virus. These outbreaks have been found in poultry, pigs, horses, seals, and even camels. There are six, 16 different hemagglutinin subtypes and nine neuraminidas subtypes. And of, and of those, only H1, H2, H3, and of the neuraminidas subtypes, N1 and N2, cause continued epidemics in humans. Flu strains are named for their subtype, H-A-N-A, -A, the location where the flu originated, the year of the isolation, and the strain number. Most influenza viruses go undetected by medical doctors, which is why it's very important to get a flu shot every year so we can avoid the flu epidemic. The end.